Hi and welcome back to the digital job site for the second of two parts in the working model tutorial series and the first part of this two-part series talked about how to quickly add a crown molding to a model. We use the follow me tool to create this cherry crown molding in this drawing and uh, in this second part I'd like to talk about changing the dimensions of a cabinet um, uh, quickly doing a what-if scenario on um, f talking about the depth of these upper tower cabinets in this model. You can see when I back up here I keep ending up in the shower glass so I'm just going to go up into the layers and turn off the shower that way it won't get in our way when we're pivoting around. But if you look out this window you can see another cabinet back here. Originally I drew this model. I'm just going to back this out 100 inches because it's easy to type and then take this cabinet back here. I think I moved that like 700 inches. Yep, that was the magic number. Originally I'd drawn these, the cabinet with uh, these tops about 8 inches deep. The customer wanted to know what it would look like if the cabinets were uh, deeper as in this scenario these are about 11 inches deep. I'm just using the back arrow to undo my steps and you can see how this crown molding that we fit was to the deeper cabinet. But just to walk through the steps and show how quickly these modifications can be made to answer a question like that, how deep should these cabinets be, um, we'll just use similar steps that I've used before and um, make some changes here. And with the, the crown molding, like I said, we made this crown molding to fit the deeper cabinet. But to adjust the crown molding, all I have to do is pivot around to the right angle, so I'm selecting just the geometry I want, no more, no less. And uh, we'll just move it three inches, and you can see how that crown molding would fit this cabinet. So it's pretty simple to do, to move something like crown molding if we we're making the cabinet wider we could just take this geometry and move it straight in the green direction any amount nine inches if we were trying to see what this would look like if it was nine inches wider but uh, the point is that using grouped geometry and keeping various things on different in different groups it's pretty easy to make these modifications I've got this cabinet built um, the whole thing is a group and then there's different groups and components that make it up. Um, but all these things we're going to want to move out three inches. So in this group here, let's try to select what we want for the front of that cabinet. You can see it didn't select anything of the crown molding or these doors, uh, but just the face of this soffit thing. And then we're just going to get it started in the direction we want to go and then I just type in three, enter it moves it out exactly three inches. Uh, these cabinet doors, they need to move out three inches. I don't need any guidelines or anything. I can just get them started moving in the direction I want to go and then just type the value into the keyboard. Um, let's see, how do I have this set up? Okay, these boxes I think are components. And I'm gonna, yeah, that's a component. You can see the other one, the right side is doing what the left side is doing. And uh, we're just going to move those faces out three inches. Simple as that. And then um, these cabinets, I got this mirror on here. And um, pivoting around here a little bit. We just want to make this mirror go three inches wider. So I'm going to stay in component edit mode and just try to grab. Oops, I'm a little jumpy here with the pivoting. I'm just going to try to grab, trying to pivot and select at the same time to get the front of that mirror. I think I got it there. Yeah, so we're just going to make sure it's in the red direction and just type our magic number three. And then um, when we get back out, I can see the cabinet, cabinet mirror moved out three inches. So we've got 
the crown molding, the soffit, the doors, upper cabinets, all that stuff moved. And now this little uh, this backsplash is a group. So we're going to try to select the face of this backsplash. And it looks like we picked up a little extra line here. So uh, by holding the shift key, I can get rid of anything that came along or so we get rid of anything that got selected that we didn't want to come along. Yeah, that's moving nicely. I could have used the push-pull tool, but I just moved that out three inches. So with those steps, uh, we, we quickly made this cabinet three inches deep. And proportionally, uh, myself and the customer thought that the deeper upper cabinets looked better than the shallower ones, but it only took me those few minutes to make the decision, show them what it looked like, how if there was going to be any conflicts or interactions between uh, the, the deeper cabinets and the shallower ones. And the, oops, I guess I've got two of the deep ones now. But anyways, um, that uh, that's the process for making modifications. A lot of these things were are fairly complex. If this geometry was, wasn't grouped, it would be very difficult to select um, certain aspects of it to move them around. And sometimes it's better to leave things grouped than it is to have them as components. And I think as you're drawing, you'll get an idea yourself what uh, type of geometry, what type of geometry you want grouped and how you want it grouped. But I guess that's about it. Some little tricks for manipulating and modifying a working model to answer what-if scenarios. Thanks for stopping by the digital job site. Make sure you go to findhomebuilding.com, go to the digital job site blog, and look up the working model tutorial blog post, and there'll be some text and other information to go along with this tutorial. Thanks for watching.